Hello, I'm Chai Hoffelenia. Welcome to Talk Thursday. With us today is Senator P.G. Gingona. He is the chairman of the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee. The committee is conducting a probe into the multi-billion peso pork barrel scam. During a hearing on Tuesday, Gingona criticizes what he calls efforts to gag and bar witnesses from appearing before the committee. He also disagreed with Justice Secretary Laila de Lima and Senate President Franklin Drillon for citing the confidentiality rule of the ombudsman. Senator Gingona joins us today to talk about the latest developments in the proceedings so far. Good afternoon, Senator Gingona. Uh, good afternoon, Chai. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, thank you for joining us. Uh, we watched the, the hearing this afternoon and it was very, very interesting. One, one, very, um, one quick question that, that jumps up is, uh, people are wondering, what are your relations now with, with Senator Drillon, given obvious differences over the confidentiality rule of the Office of the Ombudsman and your, and your letter requesting for a reconsideration of his refusal to approve the subpoena for Janet Napolis? Well, I, um, I asked him to, by, by letter, no, I asked him uh, today, I asked him through a letter to reconsider his decision, strongly mm -hmm. urging him to reconsider his decision uh, stating the law and stating the logic behind it that we cannot you know we cannot have a double standard for people whom we ask to come over to the Senate um, we asked the whistleblowers to come here we subpoenaed them and they came mm -hmm. yet when it comes to um, the, to Janet Lim Napolis uh, we cannot we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, subpoena her. Uh, have you I don't see any reason for this double, double star. Yes, have you uh, one, one point lang, one point lang, Chai. Sure. No, no, wait, one, one point lang, this important point. You sure. said the rule by the Ombudsman. No, there is no rule by the Ombudsman. Uh, actually, it's just an advice. And it's not an advice by the Ombudsman to the Senate. No, no, no. Not by all. It's, a, it's an advice by the Ombudsman to Senate President Trelon. And Senate President, Pre President Trelon took it upon himself to follow that advice. And that's what he's using as his basis for not signing the subpoena. Go ahead. But why is the Senate President listening to the Ombudsman? Isn't the Senate a, a co-equal branch of government, of, of the judiciary? Have you have you spoken to Senator Drillon in private over this issue? Senator Gingona? Yes, I was uh, I don't know okay. if you heard me a while ago. Yes. Uh, yes, I was um, asking whether you you've spoken to him in private. Uh, yes, we did speak in private prior to that. Uh, but so far, we haven't spoken yet uh, after his ruling. Uh, the, the last communication was that he texted me that he would be um, issuing a subpoena for the whistleblowers. And I texted him back saying, okay, salamat. But that's about it. Uh, today, I was expecting to talk to him um, because of the hearing. Pero he did not attend the hearing. With, I don't know why, but he did not attend the hearing for the first time. So I, I lost my chance to talk to him. Is this training relations in any way between the two of you? Uh, because you belong to the same party. To say it does not would be, I don't think that would be realistic. Of course, there's a training relation because he wants, he doesn't want to sign the subpoena, and I want him to sign the subpoena. So definitely there is a strain in the relations. Now, uh, how much strain and how much, where will this go? Um, we, 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 we still have to to see where it will end. Um, would you have any, would you hazard a guess? What, what, what could be his reason for, for opposing the subpoena of, of Janet Napolis? Of course, in the past, um, I think some of the whistleblowers had mentioned his name and insinuated that there are links or they know each other or they know of each other at the very least. Could that be one? I don't, I, I don't want to go into speculation, Chai. Um, if ever, I think that that question should be addressed uh, to Senator Dillon. But these are the facts. No? Um, uh, see, the, the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee has 
uh, issued a total of 22 subpoenas. Mm -hmm. 22 subpoenas, all have been signed. This is the 23rd subpoena, and mm -hmm. it's the only one that has not been signed by the Senate President. Uh, second, Janet Lim Napolis has been invited and subpoenaed here in the Senate twice, one in 2006 yes. and another in 2008 both with regard to the um, fertilizer scam. And in both uh, cases, she has a no-show. Now she's involved again in, in the PDAF scam. And the, I, we do not understand why the Senate President refuses to sign or approve the subpoena. Later on, when we, when we uh, investigate the Malampaya scam, because there are two facets to this scam, the PDAF and the Malampaya. Mm -hmm. The Malampaya scam is bigger than the PDAP scam, according to some sources. Yes. And the main actor there again is Jan Limnapolis. So mm -hmm. this is something that we cannot, we cannot face. This is something that we must resolve now. Because to shirk our responsibility, to, 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 to surrender our power, so to speak to some other agency by asking their opinion, Mm -hmm. would be a great disservice to the country. First of all, on the legal basis, the power of these, the Senate to, to conduct investigations and to summon people are found in the Constitution, which is the basic law of the land, the primary law of the land. The powers of the Ombudsman are found in an ordinary law. Mm -hmm. So, common sense will tell you, when there is a clash, if there ever is a clash between the primary, the basic law of the land versus an ordinary law, then which will prevail? Of course, the higher law, which is the, the which is constitution, the basic law. Um, yes. A while Secondly, ago. Secondly, in a yeah. long, long. Well, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I wanted go ahead. to pick up a point, though. Um, Secretary De Lima, um, when, when at the start of the hearing this afternoon, uh, this morning, rather, she said that um, there are there are valid concerns about um, first the appearance of the witnesses, and then second, um, you could be undermining the prosecution by revealing to the public what these witnesses know. Um, do you think these are valid points? Uh, I don't think so. Um, uh, if if that was a real, real pressing concern if that was what it was really, then they would, they would not have brought them here in the first place. Yet, when, when, we, when we made our will known to them that we really want them here, uh, they gave in. And even Senate President Relon signed the subpoena. Secondly, uh, whatever the whistleblowers say will be repeated in court, and their credibility can be tested by the judge by cross-examination and reference to other uh, pieces of evidence. So, um, summa total, I don't really buy that. Mm -hmm. But aren't you, just to pursue that point, um, don't you think you are also exposing whistleblowers to unnecessary risk? Um, given that they're very vulnerable, um, they can be attacked anytime, uh, there could be threats to, to their life. Well, that's why we have the witness protection program, and, and it's their job to secure them. And they've done a marvelous job so so far. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, there's a risk if you move people around. Definitely, but you have to balance it with the with the goals of the blue ribbon. Uh, the goal of the blue ribbon is to answer the 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 four questions. No, one, ano ba talaga nangyari at paano nangyari? Two, sino may kagagawan? Who did it? And who can be held accountable? And lastly, um, uh, how can we avoid that what happened before will not happen again? How People have to understand what happened. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And you must agree. Uh, you must agree. Uh, it's only in the blue ribbon where... where even kayo, uh, Chai, no? you, you only understood really the whole picture after Ben Hurley came in, after the, the line agencies uh, explained, and after we went through the process of how it starts with the legislator, and then he gives his request to the DBM, and then the DBM gives his request to the 
uh, line agency, and the line agency gives it to their subsidiaries such as Zarek or Nabcor, and then to the pockets. Um, uh, without without the Senate Blue Ribbon hearing, if we never conducted it, people would not know. It's a very people would not know what happened. It's a very very elaborate web of, of deception and and forgery, uh, and it's it's really amazing. How are you How are you reacting to all these everything that you've uncovered so far? Is this something that you expected? Frankly, um, the the amounts I've seen are staggering, and I'm shocked. Uh, I'm shocked. Really, it's it's so it's so huge. I can't I can't imagine it's been happening for so long. In the past, um, those who've been following this issue were saying that um, that at ten percent, twenty percent commission, maybe up to forty percent. But then now, uh, what we've seen is that nothing, not not ghost projects, nothing has uh, is delivered to. Um, to constituents that are supposed to be beneficiaries. Um, how do you intend to pursue this? Yes. How do you intend Hello? To, hello, yes. How do you intend to pursue this? Yes, how, the, to pursue this? Uh, in the whole, uh, is it just Janet Wallace that you're after? Or uh, how long will these hearings uh, last? Ah, okay, okay. Um, basic, the basic is uh, we don't have the we don't need the same quantum of evidence mm -hmm. for the conviction of a person. Mm -hmm. Now, that's why there are different goals. That's why I keep repeating. What are the goals of the blue ribbon? And like I said, no, what happened, who did, it, and how we can avoid it. So we're trying to answer the what happened. And the biggest actor of this all of this whole scam is Janet Lim Napolis. Yes. So unless and until we call her in, then we will not have the whole picture. Uh, but we don't need all the nitty-gritty, like the, the, all the documents, or, because we're not out to convict people, because the Blue Ribbon does not convict people, does not, does not pass sentence on people. It may make recommendations, and it has in the past, always made recommendations for prosecution. Mm -hmm. But that is the goal of the, the Ombudsman and later on the Sandigan Bayan. The goal of the Blue Ribbon Committee is different. And so the quantum of evidence is not as stringent um, as that of the, the, in, of the Ombudsman and we the Department have, of Justice. Yes, we have one question here from, from social media, and I think this this concern is also shared by many who've been who've been following um, the Blue Ribbon Committee hearings. Uh, this is from at Gerard Francisco O one. He asks, uh, "Can you give us an assurance that after this probe, uh, is a com there will be a comprehensive reform on public spending?" Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, uh, you must remember, I can give you my personal assurance as far as my vote, as far as my actuations. But you must remember, it is a collegial body. And a collegial body, the Senate as a collegial body, votes on, on matters. I cannot answer for my other senators. Secondly, we are not just one house, we are two houses. There is the House of Representatives, and they're made up of, wow, how many congressmen? 200, 180, thereabouts. And they also vote collectively. So I cannot answer for the House of Representatives, and I cannot an answer for the Senate as an institution, because the decision of the Senate as an institution will depend on the collective vote of the majority on issues. Okay, there's another question here. If, if you but that being said, that being said, let, 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 me, let me answer that. Yeah. Take a chai, chai. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. That being said, that being said, um, uh, on the issue of PDAF abolition, mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not mistaken, 16 senators have already said that they will abolish the PDAF. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, 16 out of 24 is definitely a majority. Now, unless they go back on their word during the voting, then I think, as far as the Senate is concerned, I can only speak for the Senate, and my basis is the 16 senators that said they are for the abolition of the pork barrel. 
Mm -hmm. You've put in, I think there have been new guidelines set for, for PDAF and, and some, some, some other people are saying that, uh, well, you've abolished the PDAF but you're, you're really just essentially calling it by a different name or putting in new guidelines and that um, PDAF is needed because it's a democratizing tool. Um, are you personally for its abolition? Or would you just want to put in uh, more stringent guidelines for, so that it's not misused? Yes, Mabuti brought that up because uh, that is also a debate some other legislators say. When you say PDAF, when you say abolish PDAF, hey, what do you really mean? Mm -hmm. uh, do you mean abo abolishing it in its present form or um, and, and making it resurre resurrect in another form? or totally eliminating it. Ako, I mean, in, 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 in favor of totally eliminating it. What does totally eliminating it? For example, if there is a PDAF allocation in the budget for 25 billion, you eliminate the, the pork barrel, you reduce, thereby decreasing the budget deficit. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, what others are proposing is, okay, let's take it out as PDAF and give it to education and give it to highway and give it to health. Pero ako, pananaw ko, kahit pa paano pwede makakailaman pa rin yun eh. And essentially, you're just resurrecting something in some other form. When in fact, the essence of it has been shown that it is a great root of corruption. Mm -hmm. So therefore, what's important now is we eliminate it totally but uh, one one argument also is that you can't uh, you can't leave the um, um, the the allocation of, of money only to the national government to national government officials because um, LG local government officials would be in the best position to know what the, what their local needs are so therefore they should have they should have a say um, what is your what is your your comment or your your reaction to that? Um, do you think this should just be given to L to local government officials, or should national um, government officials still have a big say? When you say when you say local government officials, do you mean to do you include congressmen, or do you, mayors, do you mean congressmen governor, or national government officials? Governors and and mayors essentially. No, no. National, national. Congressmen are national or local? Uh, I would say... We have to define here. What is national? I'd say congressmen would be local. Un, uh, congressmen are local. Um, well, I'd rather that the local government units are be, should be the ones to... The, the local government units are in charge of executing the laws. Yes. And therefore, when you execute the laws, you run the programs, you run the projects. Mm -hmm. So they should be the ones empowered to spend that money for their programs and for their projects. Mm -hmm. uh, legislator, be it congressmen or makers, essentially. And I think it's going, we have to get back to the basics. We have to go back to just lawmaking. Mm -hmm. That being said, uh, the 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 budget, which is the General Appropriations Act, is passed every year by Senate and Congress. Mm -hmm. And that is the allocation of money for the whole Philippines, including areas, cities and districts. So it doesn't mean that you 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 take it out. Now it's that, that that section there that says it's discretionary that the where the, the the legislator can point, oh, you put it here, you put it there, you put it here, you put it there. You're taking away discretion, you're taking away um, the pork barrel system. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another question from social media here. If in the event you are successful in, in bringing Napoles to, to appear uh, in the Blue Ribbon Committee, what would be your first question for her? Do you Would you want her convicted? And this is from... Uh, Ronald Canlas at Mr. Zippo. Yes, Ronald. Uh, my first question would be, tell us your story. Tell the Filipino people what happened. Mm -hmm. How did you do Who did it with? Uh, so that we know. So that everybody will know. 
I think there, are you yes there's there's also concern what happens after after the committee finishes with with the hearings because in the past also we also we've heard of cases where um, various Senate committees would conduct hearings and then not produce any report whatsoever and and so um, they say that you know senators do this just for media mileage um, and it's and that and just the publicity <laughs> you know you can't really please everybody uh, when we were we decided at the start if you recall uh, we said we will not yet investigate the Napoli scam because we would like a definitive report by the NBI or the department. Then we got all sorts of criticism for not negating it because for weight. And what happened is we didn't expect, we, nobody knew that COA was going to come out. So when the COA came out, somebody said, oh, ito na yung definitive report. Well, of course it's not from the NBI or DOJ, but at least it's an official government report by an independent agency. So sabi ko, now we have the basis to start the investigation. So now, now that we have the investigation, we have some people saying we're grandstanding and doing for publicity stunts. I guess you can't really, you can't really uh, place them all. Uh, but I guess the best judge is the people themselves. So from what you see, number one, do you, do you, do you find it helpful? Do you get to see what, what really happened? Mm -hmm. And try to compare what you knew about it before the hearings, mm -hmm. um, uh, I think that's the biggest uh, that's the biggest um, service that the Senate, the Senate Blue, Ribbon, Blue Ribbon can make to the Filipino people. What loopholes have you seen? Um, the the witnesses that you've summoned so far um, have explained the process, how how the money is siphoned from um, from legislators all the way to fake NGOs and other implementing agencies. Um, how do you think, can, can you avoid um, all these le leakages in the future? Mm, that's why, uh, that's true, there's so many leakages everywhere. This is just abolish the whole thing. And, uh, make sh and when I say abolish, I mean abolish in its true sense. You just don't take out the body, you kill the soul mm -hmm. uh, in some other form. Um, next week, I think the, the Commission on Audit is, or, or the week after, um, there will be discussions about Malampaya. Uh, what do you intend to do about Malampaya? Will you be summoning more witnesses in relation to this case? <laughs> yes, yes, we will. Uh, they, they, that, I talked to COA Chairman Polido Tan and they said sometime the end of October. Now that being said, again, because uh, at the center of the controversy in Malampaya is Janet Lim, the police. Again. So, again, I mean, what will we do? Call everybody, investigate everybody, but not the main actor? It doesn't, it, it, it borders on the ridiculous, actually. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think? Um, I think there are very, very um, high expectations also as far as this government is concerned um, because the president, of course, ran on an anti-corruption platform and you've, you've exposed all these elaborate means to, uh, to siphon off money. Um, where should this head uh, towards? From, from the Senate, um, do you think you can push for, uh, for quick action and even can, will there be conviction of these people? I think that's what's foremost also in, in oh. people's minds. I think it's unfair to ask the Senate whether there should be, or expect from the Senate that there should be conviction, because we're not in charge of convicting them. The one in charge of prosecuting them, as, the system, as our system goes, is the, is the ombudsman, and the one in charge of trying them and find them, finding them guilty or not guilty is the Sandigan Bayan. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as the Senate is concerned, I think the most important are the two aspects, that people get to know what happened, and secondly, that the evil, which is the pork barrel system, is abolished in its entirety. Could you maybe summarize for, for those who've, um, who haven't been watching very closely um, this issue, uh, what, what are the most interesting um, discoveries for you? From, from all the witnesses that you've listened to? Well, um, the, the scheme is very elaborate and um, 
the, the, it, it's, it's done by somebody. I don't think it can be done by, by one person alone. It's a, it's a conspiracy. And it's done by people who understand the workings of government. Kung ordinaring tao lang, si, for example, si Janet Lim na polis alone, mm -hmm. I don't, I doubt, no? I doubt. It has to be in, 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 in cahoots with, with government people, uh, people who know how government works, the ins and outs. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the most interesting thing. Any other besides that? The amounts are staggering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very, very staggering. Um, and uh, and uh, it's very brazen. It's very brazen because um, we have uh, in in the in the in the affidavits uh, some some lawmakers uh, getting their kickback personally. Uh, some lawmakers having their kickbacks uh, deposited in their bank account. Which is not very bright because then <laughs> it's documented. There's a trail. So, yeah. What happens to the senators who are charged with plunder? What if you're seated beside them? Um, how does it feel? Isn't it a bit awkward? Not a bit. Very awkward. Um, definitely, the the atmosphere in the Senate will never be the same. Um, how it <laughs> definitely it will be not the same. Uh, there will be a lot of cold. Uh, uh, well, we'll see, but I don't expect it to be friendly. You don't have just one, not two, but three in the Senate who are being charged with, who have been charged with plunder. Yes. Yes, uh, that's true. A while ago, you said you, you think that um, Janet Napolis is in cahoots with, with other people. Um, do you think there is a mastermind and that she's not the only one? There's, there are people higher. Ah, yes, that, that talk has been around. Um, but the documents uh, doesn't, don't prove any, don't, don't support that theory. And... Um, Ben Loy has also come out saying that it's Janet Lim Napoles who's the mastermind. But again, I don't think Janet Lim Napoles can be the mastermind alone. Somebody taught her the ins and outs of government. And this teaching her was not a one-time teaching. It went on and on and on for several years. Mm -hmm. um, let me just go back a bit to the um, WPP, the whistleblower protection program. A while ago, Secretary De Lima mentioned that they have a budget of only 185 million pesos for this year, I believe. Um, do you think that is sufficient? And would you have recommendations to, um, to either increase the amounts or anything more specific to strengthen the program? Well, you know, um, uh, all programs of the government have always uh, cried for lack of funds, and that's why in the budget it's really very manipulative to allocate funds, scarce resources for for uh, needs that are so catastrophic. Um, if you if you give to the WPP, where will you get it? Uh, should shall we take it away from PhilHealth? Shall we take it away from anti-tuberculosis programs? Mm -hmm. uh, shall we take it away from the armed forces? So there's always a give and take. Um, uh, but definitely, uh, all government agencies will always say that they lack money. The problem is, if we had all the money, definitely we'd give it all. Um, this is always an unending battle of priorities in the budget season. Uh, but ad another thing I'd like to add is the um, the need for a whole departure law, mm -hmm. whole departure order law, yes. as has been seen by now. Uh, you, most of you know that most of the a lot of the accused have already flown, la left the country literally, and uh, Lana, I don't know if they don't come back, uh, uh, it would be very difficult to bring them back into the fold of the law. So definitely a whole departure law is needed, mm -hmm. and we need it yesterday. 
Yesterday also, Senator Jingoy Estrada was very emphatic about selective justice. Um, what's your reaction to this? Uh, yes, that was taken up uh, kanina by Senator Alan Cayetano. And, and it was clear that uh, the Department of Justice uh, filed the charges based on the documents, based on the testimony of witnesses. Uh, it was not based on thin air. Therefore, and they were very careful. That's why uh, they wanted an airtight case. And sorry na lang, pero sila yung, sila yung nandun eh. Sila yung may dokumento. Sila yung may testigo na nagsabi na either sila kumuha or yung, yung staff nila ang, ang kumuha ng, ng pera. So because of the evidence, they will file. They, they file the cases against them. It's the evidence trail, not the political trail that matters. So is this also tactical in, in the sense that um, the, the, uh, you go after those who have, who, who have a pattern so, and, and there's strong evidence so that chances of a conviction later on if this is pursued by the office of the ombudsman would be stronger? Yes, because if you have a weak case, why file it? When you know it will be, it will be what do you call this, dismissed. Mm -hmm. uh, or acquitted, the person will be acquitted. Um, why file it? Kung uh, kulang ang ebidensya. Okay, maybe just uh, just the last few questions. What can we expect in the in the next few weeks? Um, you you mentioned Malampaya, which is which is expected to be bigger than the than this port barrel scam. Um, how long how long will the will the hearings last? Your guess is as good as mine uh, when, when it comes to Malampaya. Uh, but with Malampaya, right now all we have are the testimonies of uh, several whistleblowers. Uh, but I'd rather wait for the COA report, which I'm sure will be more uh, voluminous and would contain a lot of uh, documentary evidence. Mm -hmm. How long it will take, your guess is as good as mine. But again, at the risk of being repetitive, the main actor there is Janet Lim Napoles. And we hope um, Senator Drillon hears, hears you and reconsiders based on, on the letter that you've given him. Any last few? For the, yes? For the ahead. sake of the Senate institution, uh, for the sake of the Senate as an institution, and for the sake of the Filipino people who want to know what really happened. Any last few thoughts or uh, any last few words? Well, again, uh, I'd like, I just have to keep repeating the goals of the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee hearings. Ano nangyari? Paano nangyari? Sinong gumawa? Sino mananagot? At paano natin maiwasan yung nangyari na hindi na mangyari ulit? Iba ang goal, yun ang mga goals ng Senate Blue Ribbon Committee. Ang goals ng Ombudsman at Sandigan Bayan ay para pagpapakulong ng mga guilty. So iba ang goals and I hope people keep that in mind um, because really there's a lot of confusion and people tend to forget that the goals are different between the Senate Blue Ribbon and the Ombudsman. Thank you very much Senator Gingona. Uh, we wish you luck in, your, in the succeeding hearings and we hope that Senator Durlon uh, listens to you. We've been speaking with Senator Thank Gingona. you. Chair of the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee on the latest developments on the Senate probe into the pork barrel scam. I'm Chai Hofilenia. Thank you for watching Talk Thursday. Done. Munti ka na nagbusa ng... Munti ka na nagbusa ng... Ang battery.